Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. I'm honored to be part of this four-way collaborative project on turning a cross-grain box with, along with Richard Raff and Sam Angelo and Tomislav Tomasek from Croatia. Our goal is to show you how each of us approach this challenge of a cross-grain uh, box. I'm sure there'll be some similarities, but there should also be some differences that we can probably all learn from. I'll have links to the other four-way videos in my show notes. So in this video, I'm going to show you how I do it. It's certainly not the only way, may not be the best way, as we can see from the other, other videos, but it's the way that, that, that I've learned to do it, the way I uh, approach this particular piece of wood that I've got. Y'all keep watching. As many of y'all uh, probably know, most boxes tend to be turned uh, spindle orientation, where mounted on the lathe, where the grain runs the, the direction of the lathe. Uh, this pr project today, we're doing cross grain, which... Uh, there's some reasons why we do it the other way for most boxes in order to reduce the wood movement uh, when the wood's dry and you have seasonal changes in humidity which can cause the lid not to fit as well. So if you're doing a cross grain box we know wood moves more in the horizontal position than it does you know a long way but with a cross grain box you, you turn it the way you would typically turn a, a bowl with the grain running uh, perpendicular to the axis of the of the lathe. There are some uh, there are some differences in, in, in chucking. I think one of the biggest differences is, it, besides that wood movement, sometimes wood uh, shows d better in cross grain, uh, a cross grain box based on the, uh, uh, the spalting or, or the, the uh, coloration or, or, or the grain, uh, grain, grain patterns. In addition, larger boxes tend to be made uh, cross grain wise, uh, similar to somewhat like a large bowl with a lid. We're starting with a score, four inch uh, square of black limba from the Congo, a piece of black limba from a former project that the uh, fire exploded, and a little ebony dowel. So we're going to start this process by turning this, uh, flattening this blank and trying to get it trued up a little bit because it is kind of an oddball size. I'm going to use a spindle guy for that with some pull cuts. I'm going to take some of this waste wood off the edge and I'm going to use a small bowl gouge for that. Now I'm going to make a small tenon that I can use my 35 millimeter jaws for. This is going to be the top of the box lid. So I'm going to get a feel for where that's going to be. It'll be somewhere right about there. I'm just going to go down just a little ways. I'm going to do that with a 3 8 inch bar size uh, bowl blank. Okay, that gives me a start. Now I need to go in there and get a little bit, square this shoulder off of that, that chuck. I'm making this a very shallow recess uh, or tenon, uh, short tenon, because I don't need it to be real long and I don't want to waste any wood as I change the curve here later. Now I'm going to chuck this with these 35 millimeter jaws and the first thing I'm going to do is try to get this round with enough of a flat edge here. It's going to be at least an eighth of an inch which is going to fit into the base of the box. Tear out. Okay, now I'm going to start hauling out the lid. And we're just going to squeeze it in. This is just like this across frame top, so it's just like hollowing a little tiny little little bowl. And you're going from the outside to the inside. So 
I can put a little recess right there as part of a decoration, which might work. Or I can make a smaller one further down, which I think may be the one I'm going to opt for. So here, if I use the smaller jaws, I can see where that recess is. And that's where I would need to make the recess. So I think what I'm going to do is come in here with a with a skew and just make a tiny little little recess there. It will actually be part of the decorative effect here. be enough to handle it that, that will, will look decorative especially if I bring this in just a little bit a little bit more I'm going to come in here and just take out just a reduce the weight here a little bit And because I'm not coming back to this, uh, I need to go ahead and, and sand and finish that. So I'll do that off, off camera. Okay, now I've got the inside sanded. I've got this nice uh, recess. I measured how deep I want it to go uh, and, and tested it because I'm going to actually use part of that tenon as, as the top of the box. So now it's time for me to turn this around. And that recess is only about a sixteenth of an inch deep but it's small enough press my finger in the middle here We're rolling around here let's see what's going on I think I just got to open it up a little bit here we go snug but not too tight I think that's fine okay now I'm going to start shaping the outside and just like again, because it is cross grain, we're going to cut it just like we would a bowl. We're going to go from the uh, from the bottom to to the top. Now let me take a look at my my picture. See how I've got that shape going. It's like just a little bit of an OG, and I. I'm glad I stopped when I did because I do want to put a tiny little bead here on the outside. Come in perpendicular to the wood and then drop the handle, roll it. I'm going to do that bead on this side too. And I'll smooth that out with a little sandpaper. There, it looks good. That looks good. Yep. So now I've got to pick up that cut inside that bead and keep on going. That maybe uh, come down here. I'm going to switch to a 3 8 inch uh, spindle gouge. that profile I think that's pretty much what I'm what I'm I was striving for now I'm gonna drill a, a hole and I'm gonna drill a through hole for uh, the the knob so let me mount up a, a drill bit I'm gonna go ahead and sand the outside before I drill that hole so I don't get any of this sanding lubricant in the hole that'll interfere with the, the glue I'll go through all the grits. I forgot to turn the, the, the camera on while I was drilling, but I drilled a half inch hole, then I came, or five eighths inch hole, then I came back and drilled a three eighths inch hole. Okay, now I've put on a set of pin jaws. They're, I think, one and an eighth inch on the outside, so they'll grasp this small dowel just, just right. 
I see a little bit of crack. I hope that's not an issue. I want to make the tenon to fit that small hole, the shoulder, and just barely come through right here. And I'm going to put some texturing on it before I finish. So let me let me measure just how deep that is. It sticks out just about what I want. Okay, that's going to be the maximum size tenon. Not sure if I'm going to be able to see that that pencil mark. Oh yeah, that'll work. I can see that. Oh. Now we're going to take it down to half an inch. So I've only got an eighth of an inch. So I need to come down one sixteenth of an inch on one side. One right there. And now we'll just use a little bit of razor paste to polish it with. Okay, now we can start shaping the the flame that I'm going to use. So I fiddled with it until it until I've got a nice nice snug fit. It extends through the end a little bit. I'm going to texture that. I'm going to sand off the end first a little bit. Get something to shoot for. And I'm going to round this down. Bring this around. Definitely want to use some kind of a sanding lubricant on ebony, or you'll get heat. You can get heat checks if you're not careful. Form follows function. I found out when I put that knob in there that I really couldn't get a good grip on it, so I need to put a little bit of a cove on here. Give your finger something to latch onto. So I'm using a little quarter inch cove tool. Now that gives me something to grasp with my finger, so now I've got something that'll work. Okay, the body of the box I'm going to mount initially on a woodworm screw, so I'm just going to go ahead and, and drill it now is when it's easier to hold on to, and then I'm going to knock the square corners off on a bandsaw. So let's just. Now let's go bench saw and knock off the corners. Okay, I'm ready to mount the block of the woodworm screw. I like to use a little paraffin to make it easier to get it on and off. Use the appropriate size drill bit for your particular chuck. This is a good way to do end grain. Uh, I mean, sorry, cross grain. End grain, it doesn't do as well. First thing I'm going to do is going to round the, round the blank off. So I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge for that. I'm going to switch to a uh, more traditional grind. Again, 3 8 inch. Okay, pretty close. I've still got, got a little bit more to go. Okay. Now I'm going to reverse chuck this with a, um, a recess because I would lose too much wood if I used a tenon. So but I'm just going to go ahead and kind of flatten it off just a little bit here first. The 
recess. I want to get my templates out. It's got an error, so I want to use this one. Now this is pretty close right here. And we're going to take out just a tiny little bit. I can use a spindle gouge for that or a bowl gouge. Either one. Just I'm only going to make this a little over 16th of an inch deep. I'm going to come in with my skew. Make a little bit of a dovetail. looks good now take my design and see how I want to shape this down uh, I want to come in maybe oh, I guess I'll measure I want to come in at the bottom is somewhere around 2364 I'll just mark that That's where the slope is going to start. All right, right about here is where I'm going to put a bead. And then I'm going to put another bead on this end, but I'm going to bring this down some. So I'm going to go ahead and make that bead because that's going to guide my eye as to as to my design. So let's go ahead and mark that. I'm going to use the point tool. There's that bead. Okay. And we can use a detail gouge or we can use a bowl gouge for the outside here. bead to be just proud this black limba has got so much uh, resins oils in it it just polishes and shines just really really nice okay I'm almost there I think I just want to bring this around here just a little bit okay this is actually looking pretty good so far. So I'm going to go ahead and decorate decorate the bottom because once I turn it once once I finish with the bottom, the bottom's going to be done. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, sand that just a little bit, and then we'll come back and rechuck it. All right, the bottom didn't tuck under enough, so let me come back and bring it back a little further under. decorate the bottom of my boxes with a little bit of texturing so I'm just going to make a little button there in the middle and texture up to that and then put a bead on each side well that did not give me the look I wanted but it's going to give me the look that I'm going to going to have because I can't afford to waste any material at the bottom. So just put a tiny little V groove on each side. It's still a decoration. It's not what I wanted. All right, now we're going to go ahead and reverse chuck it. Slide it 
snug, but not so much that I'm going to blow it out. Okay. So now the key to the design here is what will the, what is the shape of the, the top? So I want to, you know, get a feel for what that is before I get too carried away. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and make that recess that this is going to fit on before I do anything else. Because then that's going to tell me how much I'm going to take off, how, how, I'm, how rounded I'm going to be. So let's just get rid of a little bit of waste wood here in the middle. And I'm going to use a box scraper to sneak up on that fit under my arm. Probably a good time to use a set of calipers. Give myself just a Scotia room. Oh, I'm gonna make it a lot bigger. Okay. Sneak up on that fit. Pays to be patient here. I don't want a snug fit, but I don't want a sloppy fit either. I can come back and fine tune that a little bit later. That lets me know where I need to be. Now I can start rounding over, um, rounding over this a bit. You know, sometimes if you don't know where you're going, any road will get you there. Um, okay. All right, I think I'm going to come out to about where that that line is right there to start, start the round over. saw marks I didn't get rid of. Okay, I'll clean that up in just a moment. So now I'm going to put a bead also at the, at the top, at the lip right right here and now let me think about how it's going to look hmm. I think I'm going to put the lip put the bead a little further back. I think I'm going to put the bead right here. I'll alter my design just a little bit on the fly. And now I'm just going to bring this in here just a little bit to that bead. And now I'm going to take this area down just a little bit below the bead. OK, 
Okay, got a bead at the top, bead at the top, do a little sanding here, and then I'm going to put a little texture band right here. Okay, I cut another recess in there to reverse chuck it because I wanted to refine the bottom shape just a little bit. And while I've, I've got it chucked up like that, I'm going to go ahead now and put in that texture band right here. I'm just going to use this crown tool and just come back and forth at a speed of no more than about 450. Whoa, this thing's unraveling on me. I better turn it upside down. Okay. And I've just got a nice little textured pattern in there that will uh, hold a little more finish so it'll be a little darker and I think it'll look very nice. It's a non-woven uh, uh, scuff pad to kind of get rid of the frizzies, kind of burnish it a little bit. Now, we're going to reverse chuck it and go ahead and, and, and finish hollowing. And I'm going to refine this curve just a little bit more before I hollow it. Get the speed up a little bit. Just get a little more pronounced. Come in there right where that bead is. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and use a center drill to kind of measure the depth. And it's going to go to right there. Okay, I'm going to use a 3 8 inch bowl gouge, taking light cuts, get the speed up a little bit. I want to make that, that shelf there just a, not quite as prominent looking so I'll just bring that in just a little bit. There we go. I'm at the bottom. I need to start cleaning up under here. I think I'm gonna use that that hunter, hunter tool. I'll get under there a little bit, a little bit better. Much better. Much better. Let's I'm going to check the depth. I don't want to get too carried away here. I don't have a lot of room there. All I can do is just clean up that bottom a little bit. I'm almost done. than I want it, so I'm going to keep taking some more out.
that's feeling pretty good. I think I can live with that. And I just need to come across the bottom here. Get rid of a little ridge I've got. Uh, angle drill uh, with sanding disc to kind of clean up the bottom and wall. Here's pictures of the final project. A uh, picture of the outside of the box, picture of the top of the box uh, on the inside, and a picture of the bottom of the box. Four Ways team is going to do a new project next month, so y'all come on back here.